Hello, this is James from the Retro Mac Cast. I am in the middle of a big move of a pretty good sized Apple computer collection. And this will probably be the last time it's all assembled in one place because when it gets moved into the house, it's going to have to go in lots of different places in order to, to store it all. So I'm taking this opportunity to shoot a video so you can see kind of everything all in one place. I did it a couple of days ago, tried to live stream it on YouTube and that was a mess. The quality was awful. So I decided I would step up the quality just a tad, give you a little smoother video and um, maybe answer some more questions along the way. So here we go. Let's, uh, let's start taking a look around. Ideally, I would go in chronological order, but it's not all laid out like that, so I'm gonna, gonna go from back to front. Um, start off with a couple of things that weren't even in the video the other day. Somebody pointed out that they didn't see an XServe. That's because there wasn't one, but uh, I do have one. And there it is. It's sitting atop of um, a couple of box um, Macs. You got a Mac Plus and a 512KE which um, they're still in those boxes. Not brand new or anything, but in their original boxes. And we get down here. Actually, let's let's skip to this very back row. Okay. And we'll start off with um, some towers. Nice Quadra 700 and Quadra 800. And then a stack of towers. So you can see I've, I've kind of grouped it by light case design. Uh, when I started this collection, I think I was trying to get everything, every single model. Uh, I think I ran out of steam. Those are familiar with the, the 90s Max. I mean, there were a ton of different variations, but I did do a pretty good job before I sort of gave up. On top of here is a couple, a couple oddballs, some freestyle assistive touch, um, they're, they're essentially reconfigured power books with touch screens. And then as you get down here, you can see some towers, 8500 work group servers and various configurations, bezel missing. I got boxes of bezels someplace that I can fix those. And then you go next here and a lot of different variations of that same case design, including uh, Power Mac and House G3, which was one I bought new, and then another oddity in there. Not a not an Apple computer in a traditional sense, but uh, threw it in there anyway. And then the the first of many portables that I have, um, and then just a stack of like cases, but different models. Although I think there's a there's a pair of Two VXs. Let's see if we can um, take it down here. I don't know what's down there. Uh, a Performa 600. And then let's see. Let's go down here. Let's see what we got here. All right. Quadra 660 AV, workgroup servers, different workgroup servers, Centra 610. Centra 610, um, PowerMax 6100, 66. Those two I actually own new too. Couple power books up here on the top. You got your G4 cube and the monitors. There's a lot of monitors. I'm just shooting just the computers themselves. There's stacks of monitors elsewhere. Eventually, I'll set up that that G4 cube with um, the appropriate monitor. You got your iMac, uh, titanium power book. Um, some other G3 era power books, and then towers down below. 9600, a G3 tower, and a 9500. Okay, we'll move up here and we'll move along. Look at the top of this desk over here. Of course, a stack of iBooks, both the original clamshell and then the white ones. Power books, a 12 inch sitting on top of 17, 
original MacBook Air, which I got new, another iMac. The Mac Mini was missing before I found it. There it is, the G4 original Mac Mini that I got new, and then the 20th, 20th anniversary Mac. Still works. Um, most of this stuff still works, last that I know it. And that's the, it's been a while since some of these were fired up. Let's go down here now below. Another missing bezel. What do we got? An 8600. The original G5 Power Mac, which was mine that I bought new. And then some G4 era Power Macs, the mirror drive doors, and then um, probably a sawtooth. And let's see, let's move along over here. Some Apple IIs, the 2C, 2C+, 2GS, regular, and WAS. Then my, my lonely Apple III. I've got the Monitor 3 to go with that, and I'll set that up later in the museum. A pair of G4 iMacs, and then a slightly newer iMac. Um, you don't see these every day, the um, Apple Network server. All right. And then what else we got here? Quadra 630, Performa, and then a 6400 and 6500 Performa. And then the G3 all in one Mac for schools sometimes called the Molar Mac, another pair of laptops on top. Now we'll move to the next row well, on the side here. Um, let's go down here, let's see. All right, yep. Power Max, LC520, and stacks of LC, uh, the LC3, the Performa 400, and the Quadra 605 all shared a very similar case. And then the, the Power Mac 4400 with the odd left side floppy drive. There's another Performa and a Macintosh 950, and then a whole mess of power books. And there you see cases with, uh, that's the, the portable case, so there's a bunch of portables in there. More power books and a stack of Mac 2s, all the variants, the 2, the 2X, and uh, the 2FX. Now over here, stacks of Apple 2s, original Apple 2. Underneath that is a, a Platinum 2E, another 2E, I think there's a 2E underneath there, a Euro Plus, Apple II, and a regular Plus, and I think there's a Plus. Oh, and then underneath there you can see the dark, it's the Bell and Howell, Apple II. Moving on, a whole stack of PowerBooks, and then we have a couple Mac IIs, the CI, the CX, and three 2SIs. For the most part, I got one of everything, but I uh, did wind up with some duplicates. PowerBooks, LC475, 7166 AV, and a 2VI. So I guess I have two 2VIs. And then, let's see, 7300, 7600, another LC3, an LC, and some PowerBooks. All right, we're getting into the, the classic Max. Let's see. Um, these kind of go in chronological orders. We got the original 128s over here and some 512. Some of them were upgraded. This one's pretty darned yellowed, but some of these are in pretty good shape. Um, this one right here is in some really good shape. I think that's the one I had running most recently. One of these has uh, the innards taken out so that it can be lit up so you can see the signatures inside. Moving along, 
um, just rows and rows again of the SE era, standard SEs. I got SEs and all the different hardware configurations, the dual floppy, the single floppy. Um, there's a, the ones that say FDHD. Then we have SE30s. There's one there. Another one over here. And uh, then the Performa 200, which uh, is essentially the same as the Mac Classic. So you've got a bunch of classics over here. And the Classic 2. And then just three color classics. But one of them is the Color Classic 2, which is a Japanese model. So somewhere in my sea of keyboards is that Japanese keyboard. And then, let's see, a couple more Mac 2s, uh, spares, some Duo docks with the PowerBook Duos in them, and then a stack of Duos, one of them with the, uh, the mini dock. A couple other randoms here, more PowerBooks, um, Centris 650 and a 660 AV down at the bottom. My lone Lisa. At least a two um, probably is in need, need of some repair to get it going again. And then a Mac TV. And I've got that complete with the black mouse keyboard, remote control. Over on the right here, we've got um, a couple of G3 Power Max, another G4. And there's the, uh, the wind tunnel. And an EMAC. All right. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to cover the last row. This one has the IMAX, beginning with the original Bondi Blue IMAC. That one was belonged to uh, my parents before I inherited it. Uh, I only have two tray loading iMacs. The other one is a grape. Once we get into their fruit flavors, and they had then the the uh, slot loading. So you've got your tangerine, blueberry, lime, strawberry, and grape. And then let's see, they had the the indigo and the ruby. That's your gem series here and the sage and these are the kind of curiosity ones the i think they they had to invent a cool process to get this into the case the blue dalmatian and the flower power and graphite and snow all right so there it is. That's all of them. Um, I was up in my attic earlier today. I actually found three more Apple II CIs and Xs up there. So there's a couple here and there, but this is most everything that I have. Um, so a couple of questions that I always get asked. Um, one is, you know, do they work? Um, they all did work at one point or another. I mean, after I got them, obviously they worked when they were new, but when I inherited them and the bulk of them I got used, I made sure I bought them in working order or if they, were, if they weren't, I made them in working order, but then they sat on shelves, most of them for many, many years. So what the status is right now, I do not know. Um, but they were all kept very well, climate controlled environment. And even this garage right now is climate controlled. Um, what else? Uh, what's it all worth? That's an interesting question. Um, I've been collecting these over 20 years since I started going and spent very little on a lot of these, um, because they were worthless and they're worth even less now <laughs> for the most part. Um, there's only a, a handful of computers of old Macs that are of any kind of collectible value. I think I pointed them out. I was, you know, pointing out like the 20th anniversary Mac, 
right? Um, that's kind of a collectible one. People might know that uh, Johnny I have worked on that one. And uh, what else? The Apple III, you know, good condition. Um, Apple IIs are um, pretty collectible. Lisa, of course, Mac TV, but uh, most of this other stuff, no, not really much money in it. All the, the, the money was in the time to assemble everything. Um, I think, you know, when I originally thought I was going to get every single model, I eventually slowed down and kind of settled on the idea, well, I'll get every case slash processor configuration. So to make sure that everything is represented. So if, if, if you had a Mac, chances are there's something here that looks pretty darn close to it. it may not have exactly the insides, but um, you'd recognize it from a distance. Um, one thing I should have answered earlier, uh, the question of like, why, like what's the point? Uh, uh, just briefly on that. So I started in middle school with Apple IIs. My parents bought me an Apple IIe and I got hooked on computers early on and used that, used computers for school throughout my entire school career. And uh, just just loved Apple computers, and then got into Macs, and, and just enjoyed those. My first Mac was a was a Mac Plus. But when you were uh, growing up um, in school or you know early in your career, you can't really afford the best stuff. You were always getting entry level, and eBay comes along, and all of a sudden people were dumping these computers models that I lusted after when I was younger, and then I could have them, you know, for pennies on the dollar. So I would get one, I would get another, and, and uh, just start building it up. And um, that collection eventually led to the podcast, which we still do, John and I, to this day. So I hope you enjoyed looking at all this. Um, the next step is to haul this all upstairs I'm not sure that was the best idea to put a computer museum in the upstairs of a house, but that's uh, where all this has to go. Um, a lot of it will go in the attic, which our attic is insulated, so it should be pretty good from the temperatures. And then uh, the rest will go in uh, a new museum um, in my room. So... There'll be more to come on that. If you're not already listening to John and me on the Retro Mac Cast, we've been doing this um, podcast since 2006. And since the pandemic started, we've been streaming on Sundays at 8 a.m. Central.